first thing I want to ask is, Rich, there are several new Fox animated comedies that you have not yet worked as an I know. executive producer on. So uh -huh. I'm, I'm leaving the Cleveland show. I'm going to take little furloughs at all of them so that I can still say I worked on all of the Sunday Night lineup. All right. <laughs> okay, so where do you guys feel like Cleveland is creatively as we begin this third season of Barry? A solid C plus, maybe? Okay. We're a good C plus, B minus? No. I think we're really <laughs> in, in the groove. I love our show. Yeah. <laughs> we're, uh, we're lubed and pumping. Well, do you feel like that, that you've sort of hit the point at which you feel like the show's voice is the show's voice and yes. you're no longer? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, look back at the early shows and coming out of Family Guy, of course you're going to, I mean, myself in particular, living in the Family Guy writer's room for seven years, you're going to go for whatever you can say, you know, shocking or not. And I think we've certainly evolved from that. And, you know, we're not, we're not trying to be anything like Family Guy. We're just doing our thing. And, but uh, even, and even, I think, on the animated shows, you know, I, I, I loved our first season, too. But I think what happens is when you have a chance to create a town like you could with Springfield or Quahog or our town, you can have 30, 40 characters speaking parts. For, and you just need a little bit of time to introduce them all because the fun comes, the real fun comes Once in season two, three, where you, they start interacting. I mean, just think how much more fun The Simpsons was in season two or three where you could have a town hall meeting and Sideshow Mel could stand up and you'd say, I know who Sideshow Mel is. It takes time. Well, tonally, where do you guys think that you landed that's a different place? We just want to do something that's, that's funny and coming out of, of who our characters are. And we're not trying to do something for, for shock or for, to see if we can get away with it, which certainly was what we would do on Family well, Guy all the time. Yeah, no, I mean, Cleveland is just a different character. I think Cleveland, in his way, I mean, I, 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 we didn't think of this going in, but he's, he does have some parts Homer. He's got some parts Hank Hill. He's got some parts... You know, he's not any one of those guys. I think he's a sweeter, more grounded father than those others. We've found our sweet spot with him, and it is coming out of his sweetness, and he is well-intended. He's not going to punch his daughter. He's not going to, you know, uh, you know, fly off the handle for no good reason just to be funny. He's, gonna, he's wanting to do something that he thinks is right, and more often than not, that leads him into his predicaments. Now, the two actors were very excited about the Christmas Die Hard episode. They felt like that was a real departure. How would you guys sort of describe that episode in terms of stepping outside of the formula a little? I'm totally psyched about Die Semi Hard. I think, um, you know, getting a chance to do our version of Family Guy Star Wars, you know, is kind of how we're approaching this, of, of taking our characters and putting them in established roles uh, from, a, from an already made piece. And uh, I, I think we've again now that we know these characters you can place them in these other kind of archetypal situations. We couldn't have done that in season one or even season two. I mean I think this is the earliest you can because it's fun to then see right Junior actually looks a little like the cop who shot a kid and so it's a natural that's who he's going to play and then it opens up all these different funny areas for him um, and, it, and it is a it's a fun thing on these animated shows to you know occasionally break the mold a little bit to do a full parody or to do, like we did last season, a live episode or to do something that you can't really do uh, on a live action show. And the Die Hard episode, is that literal? The, the Die Hard is a, it, as much it's as the... It's very true to the it's a very true plot to the, of the movie. Yeah. Uh, done in 22 minutes? Or did done they in 22. 22 minutes. Yeah. It, it was a tight 22 minutes. And we hit a, you know, the key moments that you remember from that movie. I right. think we, we hit them all. Well, why do you think Die Hard fits into the Cleveland universe? Fox owns it and we can do it. <laughs> no, I, I'm telling you. Know, you. Here's, no, here's the thing. I, 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 like just about all the writers on the staff, love that movie. My son, on his own found it with his friends when he was 14 or 15, loved that movie. And I think it's kind of out there as a real, you know, seminal, fun, action-adventure movie that's also a Christmas story, because people forget, you know, it takes place at the office Christmas party, and we thought that in and of itself made it a fun idea to say, Fox always, they like the holiday-themed episodes. We thought, this is a way to do a holiday episode with a little twist, make that our Christmas episode. Well, how did you handle the yippee ki -yay? We, you'll have to see, we, you, obviously we couldn't say the, that on network TV, so we had to come up with our own version, and that's one of the teases for the episode, but it's in there. So. And you have Kanye West coming back this season. Kanye comes back with Will I Am, Bruno Mars, and uh, Nicki Minaj, and Questlove in the same episode. 
That's a, that's a lot of... That's our Rap Illuminati episode. Okay. Cleveland stumbles into some meeting. The secret society of hip-hop rap stars who kind of control everything. And uh, there are a couple of songs in, in that one, two original songs. Um, we have a fun episode where the Gregory Brothers, who do a lot of those hilarious... Uh, Antoine Dotson. You know, the mashups on... They did one for us. Uh, Rollo and Junior filmed Cleveland doing something kind of embarrassing. And those guys, and we did it as a, they did it as a song for us. So it's the first animated one of those. And it's also hysterical. And uh, those guys deserve a lot of credit, too. Um, so that's fun. We have Felicia Rashad coming on board as Donna's mom. Um, I hear several people were very excited about Johnny Bench. Yeah, me. I, I was the most. Uh, he, <laughs> yes, here's my is... boyhood, boyhood idol. Finally figured out how to get him on the show. And he came in, and he was hilarious. So. We finally figured out how. Cleveland's at a restaurant, and he looks across the restaurant, <laughs> and he says, oh, my God, my boyhood idol, Johnny Bench. I'm not kidding. That is how we figure but it there, out. But it is also There's a worked reason. into the plot. Because he favors he's Junior. Been, he's yes. been jealous of Junior <laughs> the entire episode, I, and, and Junior has somehow befriended And to be Johnny fair Bench. to Johnny Bench, he was very funny. He came to our table, could not have been more gracious. Uh, his wife could not have been more beautiful, and he was very funny. The, the so, only thing wow. that Reagan remembered was the baseball guy with big hands. That's there hilarious. Yeah. Well. And there's a picture of him holding seven baseballs in one hand. Apparently this is impressive. So. Mike can uh, tell you everything there is to know about Johnny Bench. Uh, Mike was married to Johnny Bench briefly in the mid-70s. Come on now. Briefly. It was, a, it was a different time. It was, it was a, a drunken time. bed. It was a drunken bed. <laughs> <In> Bob Hope. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also a, um, a Cleveland Juniors and Atheist episode. Yeah, the hurricane episode is nope. coming up. Well, that there's two, actually. The hurricane episode yeah. is when it's revealed that he's an atheist. The hurricane episode is actually going to finally air? The hurricane, hurricane episode is going to air, what, October 2nd, I okay. believe? I think that's, somewhere that's in October, night. all, all the right? shows, American Dad, Family Guy, and Cleveland, unless there's a hurricane. Well, all you have to do is postpone the episode until December or something. The chances of a hurricane I, aren't I so high. That's then. the thing. So we, we, we're hoping for that. But that, yes, it's revealed that Cleveland Junior is an atheist. There's Everyone's big praying to get through the number. hurricane, and Junior does not join them. What are you doing, Junior? I don't believe in God. And what? So that's all about that. And then later in the year, we do an episode where Fergie again comes back to the show, playing a different character. She's this beautiful girl in the church choir. Junior sees her and immediately finds God goes on the church retreat to build homes for the homeless and has a rival played by Darren Chris. And what they discover about each other is Darren Chris's character discovers that Junior's an atheist and is just lying to get near Fergie. And Junior discovers that Darren's character is a Jew and is just lying to get near Fergie. So it's this kind of uh, weird love triangle among the three of them with uh, some songs that they just knocked out of the park, all three of them. Kevin Michael Richardson in, you know, not to be outclassed. He was great too. Excellent. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.